Sherry, and thank you everyone for taking time out of your busy schedule to learn a bit about Q Global. And give me one second. There we go. Um, so before I get started, I always like to take a moment and discuss what we're going to discuss. We're going to talk about in today's presentation. So here's kind of our rough agenda for the day. So we're actually going to start with talking about the development of Q Global itself, and. In terms of that, we're going to talk about a brief history or brief overview of psychological text testing. Holy cow. Um, again, before we jump into QGlobal itself. And then we're actually going to take an in depth look at how QGlobal works through a live demonstration uh, of the system itself, where we'll explore the assessment process from a practitioner's viewpoint. And this itself is going to actually going to involve demonstrating how to create examinee profiles, assigning and administering assessments, generating reports and using system resources like the resource library and the help link. Now after that, we're actually in transition into discussing system security before how to get started with QGlobal, such as ordering, uh, inventory, getting new accounts created, things like that. Now as mentioned, on the left-hand side of your screen, you guys are going to see a chat box. So if you guys have any questions, you're more than welcome to type those in. And when I have a moment or I have a good pause, we'll take a moment to answer those. Otherwise, let's go ahead and start from the beginning and get a sense of how psychological testing itself, and reporting in that matter, has actually progressed over the years. Now, psychological testing itself has been around for more than 100 years. And in this time, tests have become psychologically stronger, there are new statistical techniques, and we even have a better understanding of how they tap into neurological processes. However, the general workflow of the traditional pencil and paper administration really hasn't changed since the first Weschler Bellevue was released in, 1930, in the 1930s. So, for example, depending on the assessment, the examiner might record responses on a record form, flip pages in a stimulus book, um, maybe even score the assessment by telling up the raw scores or item responses, and then even converting these into their appropriate scores. Now, while the assessments themselves do vary on assessment time and complexity, scoring the assessments can sometimes take just as long, especially when you take into consideration the number of items, a possible scoring grids, and worksheets, the process to even convert these scores to their appropriate scale, standard, or even T-scores. Now, with the invention of the computer in the 1940s, psychological testing itself has actually capitalized on its utility to assist with test administration and scoring. And this itself actually goes as far back as 1962, when John Pearson and Wendell Swenson actually developed the first computer interpretation system for the MMPI. Now, as technology and testing advance, psych excuse me, psychological software has actually grown in union to take advantage of increased administration and scoring options, improved statistical techniques, and ease of use. So looking at some of our own scoring software platforms here at Pearson, we can actually see that these systems have changed based on emerging assessments and the available technology. So starting with the assist scoring platform's release in 1995, our platforms have evolved to allow users to not only score assessments and generate digital reports, but also digitally administer a wide variety of questionnaires, rater forms, inventories, and even assessments. So when we started developing QGlobal, we wanted to build upon our previous scoring platforms by continuing to increase the test library and also develop new administration and reporting options while at the same time increasing usability. Now, taking these considerations in mind, we've created a flexible platform that is designed to efficiently organize your examinee data, generate assessment scores, and produce accurate, comprehensive reports based on your testing preferences. So all this kind of builds up to what is QGlobal. And QGlobal is actually Pearson's web-based platform for test administration, reporting, and scoring. And at its core, QGlobal is actually the next evolution of our previous administration, scoring, and reporting platforms, like QLocal, Assist, and SciCore. Now, with this in mind, QGlobal primarily focuses on the administration of questionnaires, rating scales, and inventories. However, 
QGlobal does allow users to enter in raw scores for larger assessments for reporting purposes, such as the WISC-5, uh, the WIPC-4, and the SELF-5. Now, while in similar to nature to QGlobal, these legacy platforms, again, um, QLocal, Sitecore, Assist, these uh, platforms actually saw data being saved locally to the hard drive of the computer or maybe even network where the assessment was scored on. And kind of going one step further, if you were a QLocal user, your inventory was even saved on a HASP, so that little flash drive. Now, this could possibly hinder your ability to score your assessments and access your data based on your location and the location of your scoring computer, the location of your examinee, the availability of the inventory on your flash drive, and so on. Now, as a web-based system, QGlobal itself stores your assessment and examinee data on Pearson's secure encrypted database, giving you the ability to access your data from any web-enabled device and providing you the flexibility to administer digital assessments on the fly or review reports at your convenience. Now, in addition, inventory is stored within the system itself, so you will no longer have to load inventory and keep it on your flash drive. Again, calling back to QLocal users. So building off the legacy platforms themselves, QGlobal allows for three possible administration or you know, uh, delivery methods. And these options vary on the assessment type, form, and rater. So it is important to keep in mind that all three of these options are not available on every assessment within the system. So we're actually going to start with this three administration methods. So let me see if I can get my arrow. There it is. So the first one right here is our manual entry option. And this actually sees users administering the assessment via the traditional paper and pencil administration method, followed by logging into QGlobal and entering in the raw scores in order to receive a report. Now, for those who are PSYCOR or ASSIST users or familiar with those platforms, this is going to sound very similar. And some, of the, uh, um, some examples of assessments that focus on this method are the WISC-5, the GFTA-3, and even the WIMS-4. Now, the next method, if I can find my arrow again, there it is, is the on-screen administration method. And this actually allows an individual to be administered an assessment on the examiner's computer, so you yourself who has assigned the assessment. Now, examinees or raters, like a parent or teacher, will use the computer mouse and keyboard to endorse the responses and enter requested information. Now, users of QGlobal, so again, like yourself, can even go one step further and lock their assessment session, preventing examinees from navigating away from the test session. So this is a great way of making sure that an individual stays right on the task at hand. And this assessment method is actually similar to QLocal again, where we're able to administer the assessment right on the screen of the computer. And we're going to find a lot of the same assessments within QGlobal that utilize this method, like the MMPI2, the MCMI4, and the 16PS. Now, new to QGlobal is actually this last feature right here. And this is our remote on-screen administration. And this function, or this method, actually functions in a similar capacity to the on-screen administration, and sees examinees or respondents being administered the assessment digitally. However, instead of the assessment being administered on the examiner's computer, the respondent has actually emailed a secure URL, allowing them to complete the assessment on their own web-enabled device. And some assessments and forms that take advantage of this method could be like the BASC-3, um, parent and teacher forms, the Vineland 3, as well as the Shaywitz Dyslexia screen. Now, I'm actually going to give you a live demo of QGlobal in just a little bit. And I'm going to walk through all three of these methods. You can get a good sense of what each one would look like and what might be the best fit for you in your practice. Now, I always like this slide because it really shows us the spectrum of what QGlobal covers. And we actually, I mean, we understand that each assessment session is unique, and as such, requires a range of administration and scoring options. So with the inception of QGlobal, you now have three different ways to administer and score your assessment. So of course, there's always the traditional paper administration and scoring, but with QGlobal, you also have the ability for a hybrid administration. So again, we're using the manual entry method to enter in scores. Um, I should say paper protocols administered, manual entry to enter in scores. 
but we also have the completely digital with that on-screen administration and the remote on-screen administration. So with QGlobal, you now have the ability to administer assessments in a manner that is efficient and convenient for you, but also in a manner that is accessible for your examinee or respondent. Now, when talking about administering assessments in QGlobal, it is important to keep inventory in mind. Now, when using the platform itself, you are not charged for creating examinee profiles, assigning and administering assessments, or managing any users or inventory. However, you do need to purchase inventory in order to generate reports for your administered assessments. And with this in mind, inventory in QGlobal falls into one of three categories, two of which are involved with generating reports. So just kind of walking through this really quick, we'll spend more time on it later as well. But this first one, assets. These would be any digital manuals, stimulus books, maybe intervention guides that can be purchased for a user and assigned to them. And this actually allows the individual to have access to a digital manual when they log into IndiQ Global. So it would simply open up another tab of their web browser displaying the asset. Now this is actually found in the resource library. And during the demo, I'll actually navigate there so you guys can see exactly what that looks like as well. Now, the next two types of inventory, so the usages right here, as well as subscriptions, those are the two that are actually dealing with generating reports. Now, a usage itself allows the user to generate one report. And this can be for an assessment administered via all three administration methods, so the manual entry, on-screen administration, and remote on-screen administration. Now, this is actually similar to how QLocal handled inventory. And by default, usages are actually shared equally with all users on the account, but they can be assigned or allocated to a specific user. So if you guys purchase 100 usages, you could give you know, user John Doe 50 of them. That means those are for him specifically. Or again, you could leave them open. Now, subscriptions, on the other hand, allow a user to generate an unlimited number of reports for one, three, or five year duration. So again, that subscription is right here. So again, unlimited report generations, one, three, or five year duration, but only for the manual entry method. So again, the idea behind this, kind of the, um, the next evolution of those old assist scoring CDs or the Psychor scoring CDs that we used to send out. Now subscriptions, just like assets, are actually assigned on a per user basis. So if you have 10 individuals on your account who all want access to unlimited scoring, you will need 10 subscriptions, one assigned to each individual. Now within QGlobal, inventory itself is only used when users generate a report for the first time. So regenerating a report or generating any multi-rater, progress, or integrated reports won't cost any additional inventory. Now, when we get to the getting started with QGlobal section and talk about ordering inventory, getting your account created, I'll break down cost of inventory based on its respective category. Now, finally, before we do start the demo, excuse me, um, I always like to talk about Q Interactive for just a few moments. And for those of you who are familiar with our digital products, um, Q Interactive might sound familiar. And that's probably due to the familiar name, you know, starting with Q, uh, functionality, and family of assessments. So we do get a lot of questions concerning the two platforms and what are the differences. So I do want to take a brief moment or two to talk about the differences. So as mentioned, kind of starting with Q Global here, Q Global is actually a system-driven platform. Also, I don't actually cross that out, but Q Global is a system-driven platform, and it specializes in the administration scoring, <coughs> excuse me, and reporting of um, you know, questionnaires, inventories, and rating scales. So here we see the examiner either entering in the item responses and raw scores, or the system is actually digitally administering the assessment itself. Now, Q Interactive, on the other hand, more closely mirrors their traditional paper method. But instead of having a physical administration manual, record forms, and even stimulus books, Assessments are actually administered digitally using two iPads, one being the examiner's uh, manual and record form, 
and the second being the stimulus book. So examples of assessments that utilize Q Interactive include, excuse me, include the WISC-5, <clears throat> the GFTA-3, the WIPC-4, and the Peabody. So while the, <clears throat> while the library of assessments do overlap, Q Global and Q Interactive are distinct platforms that have a different core emphasis. Now, this is actually all I'm going to talk about for Q Interactive, but we do have more information available on both platforms on their uh, public website right here. So helloq.com. All right, so with this in mind, we're going to start the live demo. And for this, I'm actually going to share my desktop screen with you. And as soon as I do this, I'm actually not going to be able to see the chat box. But if you guys have any questions, you are still welcome to throw any questions in the chat box, and I'll be able to see those and answer those when I stop sharing my screen. So give me one second, I'm going to share my screen. And what everybody should see is my web browser right here. I'm going to make that a bit bigger. Perfect. Now, just again, really quick, in the handout that was uh, linked to with the uh, confirmation for the session, there are actually a number of screenshots that we're going to talk about today. So you're more than welcome to follow along with those, take any notes as needed. But otherwise, I always like to start at the very beginning when talking about Q Global, and that's how you even get access to the system. So whenever you're added as a user to Q Global, and that's whether or not you are the first user or administrator on the account, or whether or not it is when somebody adds you to an existing account you're always going to receive a welcome email prompting you to create your own username and password. Now, upon doing that, you're going to be navigated to this page, qglobal.pearsonclinical.com, and I highly recommend bookmarking and or favoriting this website, again, depending on your browser. Because this is where we're going to use that username and password to gain access to your account. Now, really quick, we do have a messaging system built within the login page, as we can see right here. So anytime we're doing any system maintenance, like maybe a system upgrade, um, June 10th, we're going to let you know exactly what's going on and how that may impact your ability to access the system. And we normally do that on Saturday mornings, so chances are you're not going to be logging in anyway. But what I'm going to do is log in using my username and password. Give me one second, see if I can remember it. And upon logging in, Try that again. Probably spelled my own name wrong. All right, so upon logging in, this is the page you're always going to see, regardless of whether or not you're an account administrator or a standard practitioner on the account. Now, the home screen itself comprises of this upper toolbar, having a lot of great information like the help link, resource library, even a manage accounts link, which will allow administrators to manage their accounts, such as adding users, managing inventory. And we're going to see these three tabs right here. So our Examinee tab, Group Administration, and Reporting tab. Now going through each one really quick before we look uh, at the Examinee one in a bit more detail. The Examinee tab is where practitioners or assessment administrators are going to be spending a majority of their time. And under this tab, individuals are going to be able to create new Examinee profiles, assign and administer assessments, and even generate reports. Now, the Group Administration tab allows individuals to administer an assessment in a proctored setting. So it would be like a computer lab where you're going to have individuals be administered the MMPI-2 or maybe a gifted rating scale for a school uh, for a class of students. So again, the idea is that everybody would be sitting down at a workstation and you'd be able to start the assessment for everybody at the same time, one on each computer. And finally, the Report tab is actually one of three locations within the system that actually allows you to generate a report. So we're going to see it right here on the Report tab, as well as within the Assessment Details, which we'll see in just a moment, as well as on the Individual's Examinee Details page. Now, for today, we're actually just going to focus on the Examinee tab. And again, because this is where our assessment process goes through. So what we're actually going to do for the rest of the demo is walk through a sample assessment um, process. So we're going to talk about creating a profile, assigning and administering assessments, and generating reports. So the first step in you know, starting the assessment process for an individual would be to determine whether or not they have an examinee profile already created on your account. Now the easy way to do that 
depending on how many examinees you have, would be to look at this table right here, which actually demonstrates or represents each examinee profile that has been created on your account. So for example, this circle right here would indicate the account for Vineland example, or my occupation examinee, and so on. Now if we don't locate the individual, it likely means that we haven't created a profile for them already. So we can create a new one by clicking on this new examinee button. Now by clicking on the new examinee button, we're going to be prompted to enter in the individual's first and last name, an optional examinee ID, as well as your gender and date of birth. So again, we need an identifying piece of information as well as the information required for standardization. Now, after all this information has been added, we're simply going to click the Save button. I'm just going to click Cancel for today. And this is going to navigate us right back to the Examinee tab of the home screen. And we're going to see our newly created individual right here at the top. So it's going to be really easy to locate the individual. So first step would be to locate the individual's profile. Again, that may include creating a new one. The second step in the assessment process is going to be to assign an assessment to the individual themselves. So let's say I want to go ahead and assign an assessment to my sample examinee. To do that, I can simply select the individual by clicking the checkbox associated with their row, and then click the Assign New Assessment button. And what that's going to do, by default, is navigate me to my All Assessments tab, which is going to show all the assessments available within the system. And the behind-the-scenes answer for I see everything, everybody currently has the same QGlobal license. Now with that in mind, as mentioned earlier, you are only going to be able to generate reports for assessments that you have inventory for. So just keep that in mind. Now what I'm going to have to do, of course, is locate the assessment that I'd like to assign to my examinee. So let's assume that I want to go ahead and assign the, let's say the BASC 3 uh, best. I want to get that uh, behavioral um, scale out there, that behavioral emotional uh, scale. So maybe I want to assign it to an individual, or maybe I gave it to a parent or a teacher to fill out. So let's say I have my uh, teacher, child, adolescent form right there, and that's the one I want to assign. I can assign that to an individual by clicking the Assign button, so right here to select it, and then by clicking the Assign button itself, I'm actually going to assign the assessment to the individual's profile and automatically navigate into the assessment itself allowing me to review the examinee details as copied from the individual's profile, view the assessment details, so again, the assessment that I assign, its status, it's ready for administration, the administration date, which will default as the day that you do assign the assessment, the examiner, so make sure that you select yourself out of that list, and of course, the delivery method. So this is how we're administering the assessment, whether or not that's by the manual entry, on-screen, or remote on-screen administration method. Now the third section on the screen is comprised of these three links and tabs. So there's demographics, item entry, and assessment help. And I always like to point out the assessment help link right away, because if at any time you're unsure of how to administer or enter scores in for a specific assessment, like maybe my BASC 3 best, you can click on this link. It's going to open up a nice new tab of your web browser, uh, providing more information on not only how to enter in the scores right here, on the left-hand side, we can also see that I have information on how to configure the report. So a lot of great information on this page. And of course, we can navigate through this left-hand side as needed. So again, if I needed some information on the rating scales, I can click here. It's going to tell me how to enter the BASC 3 TRS, PRS, SRP scores. And I can go from there. And of course, that would include the uh, BASC, uh, Flex Monitor, everything else for the BASC 3. All right, so let's actually walk through the assessment, or I should say the delivery methods. And we're actually going to use the manual entry as an example for our BASC 3 best. So what we need to do is whenever we assign a manual entry assessment, is we're going to have to navigate down, locate our demographics tab, and enter in any of the information associated with these red asterisks. So for example, this is a teacher form. So maybe this is my, uh, let's just say, example teacher. Be real creative with the naming. We can also select the grade for the individual, uh, let's say fifth grade. And what I'm going to do next is click Item Entry. And this is going to show me all the item responses corresponding with the paper protocol. So you can see that on the best, I got 20 questions. 
So if I want to go ahead and answer these questions, what I'm going to do is click in the respective box, the text field, and type in the appropriate response. Now, what I highly recommend for new users, and I do this all the time myself as well, is to always click the Show Item Text option. Because when you select this option and click in one of the boxes, it's going to show us the test question, so it's just a nice visual of reminding us where we are. It's even going to show us the, the responses, so my never, sometimes, often, almost always for this specific assessment, and it's going to show me my numerical equivalents, so my never, sometimes, often, almost always. So it's a great way of knowing exactly where I am, what I'm able to enter into the system, and again, what that represents. Now, I'm actually going to go through and randomly enter in the rest of these so you can see what it looks like when we save the assessment. So what happens when we're done with it and we're ready for reporting? Now, after we've entered in all the assessments, we are going to notice that we have two sets of buttons. So I have a set here, so these three, and this, the other one is right up here. Now, in no particular order, the Cancel button, if selected, will actually close the assessment and act as if we had never assigned this specific instance to an examinee's profile. So we might want to do this when we notice that we actually assigned the, the wrong age group, excuse me, or maybe I assigned a teacher instead of a parent. Now the Save button, when we press it, is actually going to save our assessment. So it's going to save our progress, leaving us right here on the same page. So it allows us to keep editing as needed. Now, I highly recommend for individuals that are uh, maybe MMPI2 users, longer behavioral skills, that you frequently save your work. Because, you know, for questionnaires that are, you know, 100, maybe 500 plus questions, the last thing that you want to do is accidentally close out of the tab before you've saved. So manual entry, it's not going to save automatically. We want to hit the Save button. Now, the final button, Save and Close, does two things as implied. The first is that it is going to save our responses. So we click this button, and it's going to save it. But the second thing that it's going to do is it's actually going to close the assessment. And by closing the assessment, I simply mean that we're not able to actively edit it. The reason for this is we can't generate a report in the system that is actively or currently being edited. So it's just our way of saying, yep, I'm done. I'm ready to generate the report. Or maybe you need to take a break, go to your next uh, meet with your next client. You can do that as well. Now, when I click the button, I do see this window that appears that says Verify Data Entry. And I'm going to see three options. And by default, verification is set as optional in all Q Global accounts. But you can change this to be required or even um, not necessary for your account. It's completely up to you guys. But when it's set as optional, we're going to see these three buttons. So my Verify Now, Verify Later, and Never Verify This Assessment Record. Given you option to verify now, we'd simply re-enter in all the scores. Verify later, we would have to re-enter in the scores at a different time before we can generate the report. Or never verify, which will not require you to re-enter in the scores. Now, I picked never verify for this assessment record today just because I did some random responding. But, you know, kind of my two cents on it is that, you know, if you have all the time in the world, verification is fantastic. It really double checks that what you entered is indeed what the individual endorsed, what they responded. Now, I also realize that not everybody has all the time in the world, which is why it's nice to have that optional setting selected. kind of gives you that prompt each time. I like to think of it as a little nudge saying, do you have time to double check? If not, that's just fine. Now, we are going to see that after I do select my verification option, whether or not it's to add that information or, as I did, never verify, we do see a Generate Report button right here. So this is actually location two within the system that we can generate a report. Of course, that first one being that Report tab of the home screen. Now, I'm actually going to hold off on generating a report for just a few minutes because I do want to go through the other three administration methods before we talk about generating a report, just so we can finish administration then talk about scoring. So what I'm going to do is actually navigate back to the home screen. And let's go ahead and administer another assessment or assign another assessment. So let's select the individual. I'm going to click Assign New Assessment. And uh, let's actually go ahead and maybe be the Vineland 3. So let's do, a, uh, let's do an interview form. Why not? So we're going to assign that. And when we're doing an on-screen administration, 
it's going to be nearly identical to that, again, what we're seeing display-wise as the manual entry. But we are going to see a few different changes to it, and that's going to be dependent, again, on the assessment itself. So for example, we're still going to see the assessment or the examity details, assessment details, demographics, item entry, assessment help. That's going to always be there regardless of whatever assessment it is within the system. However, when we do select the on-screen administration option, you can ignore that, we are going to see that a few things change on the screen. Now, the first two obvious things are going to be the fact that our Start Assessment button is now visible. And now we can see that any demographic information that would normally be required to be endorsed here is now going to actually be completed within the assessment itself. So we don't have to enter in maybe the you know, respondent's first and last name or anything like that. Additionally, and the third thing is that the item entry itself, again, regardless of whatever assessment it is when doing an on-screen or remote on-screen administration, actually, we're actually not able to manually enter in the responses at this point because, again, they're going to be completed within the assessment. Now, before we do launch the on-screen administration, we have to decide whether or not we'd like to enable the test session lock. As advertised right here, the test session lock is actually a one-time software download that, when enabled, will actually prevent an individual from navigating away from the assessment until the key combination of Control, Shift, and Q are pressed in unison. So again, it's a great way of kind of locking individuals right on the screen, keeping them on the task at hand. And again, if we have any QLocal users with us, very similar. QLocal would lock it and only unlock it when you typed in a um, specific word and the password. Same idea. You'll just have to go ahead and download it right here for a Windows or Mac computer. This is the same link. It'll download the appropriate one. Now, when we are ready to start the assessment, we're going to click the Start Assessment button. And first, we're going to see a notification just letting us know that any time we do provide a third party with access to our station, like maybe a parent or teacher or even a student, um, there's a risk that they could access any potentially you know, unsecured information. So it's just giving you a reminder to make sure that the station is secure. Now, when you're confident that it is, go ahead and click I Acknowledge. And we're going to see two things happen. The first and most obvious is that we do see a new tab of our web browser appear make it a bit bigger for you guys, containing the assessment itself. So we're going to see all of our instructions, uh, test questions, sample items, everything like that. But the second thing that happens is that it does log you out of QGlobal. And that is intended. It is actually a security feature of the system designed to make sure that at the very least your QGlobal data is secure regardless of whether or not you have the test session lock enabled. So again, that's intended. Now, just to give you guys a heads up, we did notice a new tab of your web browser did open. So depending on the web browser that you're using, as well as its current version, it may detect opening new tabs as a pop-up from that website. So you're going to want to go ahead, again, if you're using the on-screen administration, to enter in this qglobal.pearsonclinical.com as an exception to your web browser's pop-up blocker. That will help guarantee that any pages that are meant to open as a result of the assessment process do open as normal. So again, go ahead and add this as an exception to your respective pop-up blocker. And you could always just Google your, um, you know, do it, just do a search for your web browser, provide detailed instructions on how to do that. But just spending a few moments within the assessment itself, again, we're going to see our test instructions. It's going to tell individuals how it's rated. In this case, it is for yourself, for the interviewer. It's going to let you know how to score, when to score. In this case, we're going to have to enter in the respondent's name. So let's just say, you know, uh, parent, you know, examinee. Let's have the mother. And then we'd see test questions. Now, these themselves vary depending on the assessment. So I'm not going to go into too much about the Vineland 3 in this case. And we actually have training materials and recorded webinars on the respective um, products you know, web, uh, page on PearsonClinical.com. We can always get more information on that as well. But the general rule of thumb is that individuals will use the mouse and click on the appropriate responses before progressing to the next page. Now, a nice feature of doing assessments digitally is that depending on the assessment itself, you may not only have individual probes or scoring criteria, 
but you may not even be able to progress to the next page for answering all the questions. So on forms like the Vineland or the Basque, again, some of these inventories or rating scales, sometimes it's a common occurrence where it becomes an invalid protocol due to item omission. Doing it digitally prompts individuals to complete all the items on the page, I like to think rather subtly, before they can navigate to the next page. So again, it helps, ver or, um, it helps make sure that excuse me, um, all the items are endorsed, that you don't have an invalid protocol due to item mission. Now, when the assessment itself is completed, we are going to see an, or we're actually going to see two end of assessment pages. The first one letting us know that all the questions have been completed, and upon clicking that directional arrow one more time, we would thereby complete the assessment. The second page is actually going to let us know that the assessment has been completed, and at that point, we can go ahead and close the tab. And of course, if we have the test session lock enabled, we can hit that Control Shift Q to close the assessment. At that point, after we finished it, so let's just close this, assume that we had finished, we're able to log back into the system and generate the report. Now, even itself, if I do close the assessment before it has been completed, we can actually reopen the assessment as needed. So again, if we don't have that test session lock enabled, we can simply go ahead and log back into Q Global. Give it a second. Locate the individual's profile. Here's my sample examinee. And we're able to navigate back into the assessment as needed. So again, if it's closed for whatever reason, you can always get back in. Now, I did navigate to the individual's profile. And personally, this is where I like to assign assessments. And we found third location right there for generating reports. So if I did want to go ahead and assign a remote on-screen administration, um, like maybe the Shaywitz dyslexia screen, maybe send that to a parent, what I can do is simply, again, type in the Shaywitz, select the appropriate form. I would assign that. In this case, the individual's out of normed. That's just fine. Of course, uh, form one would be a first grader, form, uh, form two, first grader, form one, kindergartner in this case. But what I would do is I see my administration methods, so I'm going to select the remote on screen this time. And we're going to see that the page changes again, but very similar to what we just saw for the remote on screen or for the on screen administration. The main difference here is that we are going to have to um, enter in the respondent's first and last name. So again, who we're sending this to. So <clears throat> excuse me, maybe I'm sending it to myself in this case. Let's assume that uh, I'm a teacher for this example. We're not going to have to do some others. Let's say John Doe, one of my initials. And after you've added in the information, again, any demographic information that's required, we're going to click the Preview and Send Invitation button. <coughs> Excuse me. And that's going to bring us to our preview page. We're able to review who the recipient is, first, last name, email address. We even see the subject line right here, so Invitation to Complete Questionnaire. Even have the ability to CC yourself on the email so you get a copy as well. And we're going to see the email template itself. Now, within Q Global, all users have access to four system generated templates. And that's going to be an examinee template in English and Spanish, and a rater, so like a parent or teacher in English or Spanish. That's how we get the four. And this is an example of the recipient or that rater email invitation. Now, within this invitation itself, it is actually fully customizable. So we can go ahead and click anywhere and you know, add uh, text you know, as needed. Or you know, again, whatever else you would want to add to it. In the body of the email itself, we are going to see these bracketed text fields. And these are simply called tokens within the system, like this one right here. And I like to think of a token as a fancy word for placeholder. Because what's going to happen is as soon as I send this email to the recipient, all the tokens are going to be filled in with the, recipient, with the appropriate text from the system. So for example, dear recipient first name, this token is going to be replaced with the individual's name as indicated in the recipient first name field. Same thing with examinee first name, last name, and so on. Now if you do go ahead and create your own template, uh, we can always save it. So save it to yourself, share it to everybody on your account, and name it. So it allows you to access it from the Apply Template right here. So your template could look something very similar to this, uh, one that I created kind of demonstrating a new private practice clinic that specializes in neurocognitive assessments. 
Now, when modifying it, the, the only thing that you need in here that is system generated is going to be this link right here, so this ROSA production URL. And that's where we're going to have a remote on-screen administration link when we send it. So again, you can remove everything else. We'll need this link right here. Otherwise, when we're ready to send it, we're simply going to click the Send Invitation button. And this is going to compile the email, save the assessment to their profile, and or send it directly to the individual's email address, as indicated by this blue bar. So if I navigate to my email address, there it is right here. So here's that email. So again, in real time, probably about two to three seconds, I'm able to click on the Click Here link. I can open up a new tab in my web browser displaying the assessment. So again, I can see my instructions. A little bit more. And then the individual is able to go ahead and endorse the responses. So I am actually going to finish this one really quick just so we can see what it looks like when an assessment is completed because this one's only 12 questions. It's a really easy one to demonstrate. Now, as mentioned earlier, we do have two end of assessment pages, this being the first one right here. So again, you have reached the end of the assessment. Click the directional arrow to submit your responses. And upon submitting, you are actually going to receive this completed page, letting the individual know that they can now close the tab. Now, whenever an assessment is completed, like a remote on-screen administration, you are even going to receive an email letting you know that the assessment has been completed. So right here, I can see that the assessment has been completed so that I can close, or I can log back in and close the, or uh, I shouldn't say close the report, generate the report. So again, it's going to let you know exactly who that was for, my sample examinee, and I can go from there. So at this point, I'm going to go back into Q Global and generate the report for the individual. All right, three more things I want to talk about in Q Global before we navigate back to the PowerPoint. The first is, of course, how to generate a report. And again, we saw that we can do that on the Reports tab, on the Assessment Details page, and even on the individual's individual profile. So if I click on their profile to navigate back in, I'm going to see this table right here below. That's the Assessment History table. And that indicates all the assessments that have been assigned and administered to the examinee, the administration date, as well as the delivery method and status. So if I want to go ahead and, and generate a report, I have to locate an assessment that he has either ready for reporting or report generated state. I'll at that point select it and click Generate Report. Doing that is going to open up a window for me showing me all the available reports within the system for the selected assessment. So my Shea with individual report. And upon clicking on the report type, it is going to bring up my report generation window. I should say my report configuration window. That is going to display the selected assessment and the examining, my inventory. So I select one report. So it's going to require one report usage. Also my available. Allow me to select the desired report type, in this case an Adobe PDF or Microsoft Word document. And when I'm ready to generate it, I'm going to click the Generate Report button. That's going to compile all the reports, or all the data, I should say, and download it to the Downloads folder of my computer. Now, that is how we generate one report. Now, there are assessment-specific group reports, multi-rater, integrated reports, and, we would, um, and that method would be in the exact same fashion. The only difference is that we would simply select two reports at the same time, again, with a report-generated status, click Generate Report, and now when that report window comes up showing us our various forms, we're going to see all those um, additional forms, like my integrated multi-rater progress. All right, last two things I want to talk about in Q Global before we talk about security and getting started. The resource library itself, as found in the upper uh, taskbar, contains a collection of documents pertaining not only to the assessments within the system, but also about Q Global itself. So in this Q Global, about Q Global folder, we can find our uh, manuals, rating scales, I should say uh, manuals, training videos, everything in between. And within the folders themselves, so for example, the BASC-3, you're going to see a general folder that may contain like sample reports, appendices, additional information on the scales itself. And if you do have an allocated asset, like a manual, intervention guide, stimulus book, whatever that may be, you're going to see a restricted folder containing all those assets. And upon clicking on one, 
like the Bass Green Manual, it's going to open up another tab of your web browser displaying the asset. All right, so finally I want to talk about the help link, and it's actually one of my favorite features of the system for new users, because when you click on the help link, it actually navigates you directly to the help page associated with what you clicked on. So for example, I was on the resource library when I clicked the help link, so the help page automatically navigates me to the resource library help page. But I can always navigate to different sections, maybe uh, you know, reports. I want to talk about generating reports. We can always navigate to there right on the left-hand side, so we can do that as well, look at our index, we can even search, and we even have our terms glossary. So again, a lot of great information, all available within the system. With that in mind, I'm going to navigate back to the slideshow, see if any questions came in. And then we'll also go ahead and, excuse me, uh, we'll also go ahead and uh, talk about um, security. All right, um, I do see a question that came in, uh, and I want to address that really quick because we just talked about it. So how do we get like multi-rater reforms, in this case, um, I should say multi-rater reports, in this case for the BASC-3. So yep, what we would do is we'd actually select uh, the appropriate forms, in this case maybe two parent forms, two teacher forms, um, whatever would be the appropriate combination. So we would just select those two on either the report tab or on the individual's profile, and then click the generate report button. If you guys are looking for specific information on how to generate like a specific report for an assessment, you're going to want to look at the assessment help link. Um, and that will provide you know, assessment specific information, both in terms of administration and reporting. So again, we just want to select uh, two compatible reports, then click the generate report button. All right, so the test library itself, this page right here just shows a variety of assessments that are currently available within Q Global. Uh, for example, like the Goldman First 03, the Sensory Profile, Shaywitz, Vineland, Basque. And we currently have 65 assessments within the system with over 95 different forms, and it's always expanding. So we're actually going to be adding the SSIS SEL pretty soon to the system, just in the next uh, few weeks or so. So we're always adding more. But everybody's favorite topic, security. So let's talk about the precautions that we put in place to make sure that your examinee and test data is secure. So first, federal regulations do consider Pearson as not only a business associate, but also as a covered entity. And with this in mind, Q Global is HIPAA compliant and complies with the security rule, which requires the appropriate administrative, physical, and technical safeguards to ensure the confidentiality, integrity, and security of your system, or of your data, I should say. Now, when actively using Q Global, your data is encrypted through use of secure HTTPS and TLS security to provide communication security. Now, when your data is at rest, it's stored in Pearson Secure Encrypted Database. Now, at all user levels, users within Q Global are assigned a user role. And the user roles themselves allow for varying levels of access or permissions within the account. And this can range from restricting select individuals to generating reports to even administering and assigning assessments. Now, of course, logging to Q Global itself, every individual is going to have their own unique username and password. And these have a minimum um, complexity limit to, secure, to ensure security. And finally, we have firewalls placed within the system and your data is segregated as well. So I'm not going to spend too much time on the next two slides, but it's just really a visualization of the workflow for Q Global, for both the manual entry, the on-screen, and the remote on-screen administrations. So for example, you as the user would log into Q Global, use your username and password to get access to the system right here. And you know, if you are doing the manual entry, you're just entering in scores, creating profiles, this is where you're going to be spending all your time. Now, if you are doing the on-screen administration, you are actually navigated to, our, to a secure digital administration database where the assessment is actually administered. And the only data stored in this system are going to be those item responses. And as soon as the assessment is complete, it's actually transferred back into Q Global 
you know, proper, so to say. And that's where, excuse me, and that's then saved to their examinee profile, and you're able to generate the report. Now, the remote on-screen administration is nearly identical to the on-screen. The only difference is that you are emailing that third party, maybe a parent or teacher, that URL by upon clicking brings them into the remote on-screen administration database, that digital database. Otherwise, again, the only thing endorsed there would be any respondent information that they endorse, as well as item responses. No examinee data is in here. And then it's transferred right back to the individual's examinee profile. So let's navigate to necessary hardware, because this is another question we get a lot. So for example, what kind of information is, um, you know, just in terms of hardware, what do I need to get started? And the short answer is going to be a computer with access to the internet. So again, a web-enabled device like a desktop, laptop computer, you can even use this with a tablet, you know, if you want to or need to. Next, you would also need a Q Global account that has been activated and has inventory, of course. And you would need an operating system. So if you're using Windows 10, uh, I should say Windows, operating system 7 through 10, Mac OS 10.9 or higher. Now, we are compatible with all major web browsers. I would recommend using either, either Google Chrome or Mozilla Firefox. It's kind of our web browsers of choice. Now, as mentioned earlier, make sure to add qglobal.pearsonclinical.com as an exception to your web browser's pop-up blocker. All right, so let's talk about getting started with QGlobal. So what do you need? First, prices for the individual usages, subscriptions, and assets can actually be found on the assessments page on pearsonclinical.com. So again, just right on their product page. Now, if you were to go to the Q Global product page, again, on pearsonclinical.com, it even allows you to add inventory to your cart, so your digital cart, both subscriptions and usages. Now, for select assessments, we even have volume discounts on usages. So depending on the number that you purchase, the price per usage goes down. And this is what a lot of people like to hear, especially those who are currently Q Local customers. And that is that Q Global licenses are free. So the only cost associated with the system is purchasing inventory, so any assets, usages, or subscription. Now, in terms of pricing for individual assets, again, any manuals, intervention guides, stimulus books, these are relatively the same as their physical counterpart. So for example, I have a Vine 3 manual. The physical one would be $150. The digital would also be $150. So again, for a majority of these, they're the exact same price. There is some fluctuation, but general rule of thumb, it's the same. Now, again, these assets themselves are allocated or assigned on a per user basis. So again, if you have 10 users on your account and they want, maybe all 10 want access to a BAST 3 digital manual, you would need 10 manuals, one assigned to each user. Now subscriptions, again, this is the unlimited scoring for one, three, five year duration when using the manual entry method only. These vary depending on the year and the type. So this little chart right here, this little table is actually our 2017 price. So if you wanted uh, access to a basic report type, maybe like the, the WISC-5 basic report, and you wanted one year's worth of scoring, unlimited scoring, $40 per user. If you wanted an assessment, unlimited scoring for maybe uh, an assessment that has interpretive recommendations or intervention recommendations, like the BASC-3 report with intervention recommendations, that would be $60 for one year. And you can see that as we go up in price, you actually get a small price break. So you get a small discount the longer the subscription is. It's always good to keep in mind as well. Now, usages are the odd duck of the three in terms of pricing because it's not as neatly structured as subscription. And that's because pricing does vary depending on the assessment itself. So for example, looking at um, some examples right here. So if I wanted a best through report, and again, I want to do this digitally, so I would need a usage, it's gonna be $2.99 per report. And again, the idea behind this is that it's not only scoring it, like the subscription would, 
but you are also digitally administering the assessments. This would be your digital um, record form as well. Final and comprehensive, so you can see that as you go up with those interpretive intervention ones, 350. The Shaywitz though, because the screener is 99 cents. And we are gonna notice that for assessments like the MMPI-2 and the MCMI-4 that are both on Q Local and Q Global, they are gonna be cheaper on Q Global than Q Local. So we give you a bit of a price break as well. And again, remember also that license uh, fee doesn't exist for Q Global. So finally, how to get started. Now, in terms of ordering, we have four different ways you can order Q Global inventory. And that's going to be consistent with all inventory with, um, you know, from Pearson. So you guys can always call in over the phone. Um, you can always use a mail-in form. Uh, you can even fax in a purchase order. Or, of course, you can use uh, PearsonClinical.com. Now, regardless of when you order, what's going to happen is if you order QGlobal inventory for the first time, it is going to trigger that new account to be created. If you are an existing user, let us know, like if you contact us, send in a PO, what your Q Global account number is. It's just a six-digit account. It's found right under that Manage Accounts link that I pointed to earlier. And that's going to let us know exactly where to put the inventory in within the system, so right to your account. Now, if you guys would like a quote for any Q Global inventory, what I highly recommend doing is reaching out to your assessment consultants and let them know that you are a prospective Q Global user maybe you're an existing one and um, you're thinking about expanding your inventory, and they'll be more than happy to generate a quote for you. Now, if you're not sure who your consultant is or who your area representative is, I embedded a link right here in your handout. So if you click on that, it's going to navigate you to pearsonclinical.com and it lets you know exactly who your representative would be based on you know, your location. So, for example, if you were in Minnesota, where I am, it lets you know exactly who your representative is. All right, so to recap really quick, Q Global is portable because you can access it from a web-enabled device. It's efficient as assessments can be digitally administered on your computer. It can be economical because you can purchase individual report usages or save time, or I should say uh, save money, with the unlimited use subscriptions for paper administration. It's even extensive, so scoring is available for 65 and growing assessments and 95 plus forms many of which do offer that on-screen administration method. It's also flexible, so you can generate standard reports or multiple reports at once. Comprehensive, as many of the assessments do offer interpretive or reports with intervention recommendations. And of course, it's secure, so you can be confident that your data is secure and encrypted to industry standards. All right, so that is the end of today's presentation. So I do want to thank everybody for attending today and learning a bit more about Q Global. And of course, if you're an existing Q Global user, hope you learned a few more uh, tips and tricks to navigate through the system. Now, when you do end, or when you do uh, exit out of the presentation today, you are going to be presented with a brief survey, just letting us know how we did. So if there's any information that we feel like you feel like we didn't cover that you think would be helpful, let us know. We'd be happy to read it, follow up with you and maybe even modify the presentation for other users in the future. So if you do have any uh, questions, I do see we have uh, just a handful of seconds left before the 1 o'clock hour. Um, you are more than welcome to type them into the chat box, be able to answer that for you. Otherwise, upon leaving, again, in that survey, there's going to be a comment section. You are more than welcome to type in your question then, and I will get back to you directly. But again, if you have the time, would really appreciate any feedback that you have. Otherwise, as I don't see any questions coming in, again, I want to thank everybody for taking time out of their busy schedule, and we hope to see you online down the road.